Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. <coughs> I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 241, question number 5. There are 15 questions in this section and therefore the first 5 questions are easy, the next 5 are medium and the last 5, 11 through 15 are hard. Not that, not that it would apply to you when you take your exam because these days the questions are no longer given in paper and pencil format, they are given on the computer which where, they are, where, they, where the problems are computer adaptive. The difficulty level is, is the, uh, of a given problem depends on how we did in the previous problem. But anyway, you should know that part and if you don't know it, look it up and make sure you know it. Number five. I don't know what, what to do here because it's a very simple, very straightforward problem. 83% of people who took the exam got this question right. 17% got it wrong and my hunch is, my gut feeling is that of the 17% who got this question right, a large number of them probably got it wrong because uh, they were careless, not because they did not understand the concept, they were careless because when, when I make mistake on the easy questions, most of the time, vast majority of the time, I would say probably 99% of the time, if I, make one of the, if I miss one of the first five, the reason is because I'm too cocky, I'm too careless, too arrogant, happens to the best of us. And my, gut, my gut feeling is that they probably they, they did realize that seven and one fifth is equal to seven point two, but then in their haste, they probably ended up reading this thing as seven point two as well. As you can see clearly, it is not seven point two; it's seven point zero two. Seven point zero two versus seven point two. Seven point two, of course, is bigger than that. Or if you were to multiply both quantity by hundred, you would immediately see that this is seven twenty versus seven o two. Can I multiply both quantity by a given number, the two columns? Of course, why not? If you ask me which quantity is bigger, 3 or 4, I could compare 3 versus 4, I could multiply both quantity by 100. It's not going to change the answer as you can see. So if you multiply both quantity by 100, you can clearly see that this is 720 versus 702. The answer is A. That's all. That's all. I'm going to erase this thing, we're going to move on with our lives. Let's look at number six. Number six says y over two versus x plus y over two. y over two versus x plus y over two. Let me make a couple of comments here before I actually solve this question. You could solve this problem the way it is given to you and it's fine. You will get where you want to go, but it will probably cost you more time. It'll, you'll end up making it more complicated. The question is, what is uh, your definition of making something complicated on the, on the exam? Unnecessarily complicated, that is. Making something unnecessarily complicated on the exam, my definition of that is that it costs me probably an extra second or more. If it costs me more, if it costs me one more second than it needs to cost me, then it's a waste of time. So you could solve it the way it is, or you could do something else. For example, look here. For example, if I were to ask you, 2 plus 3 plus 4 versus 2 plus 3 plus 5 over 10. If I ask you which quantity is bigger, if I ask you which quantity is bigger, which column is bigger here, or this quantity versus that quantity, you could sit there and, and, and figure out that 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9, this is 9 over 10, this is 10 over 10, and this is Therefore, this is 0.9, and this is 1, and then you tell me that 0.9, of course, is smaller than 1, and therefore the answer is B. You could do all of that if you wanted to, but if you did that, you will have missed the point. You will have missed the bloody point. The point here is that these questions are called quantitative comparison, not computation, which is why I write down the word computation, and then I cross them out, cross it out for emphasis. These are not called computation. A lot of people forget about this, this, simple, sim this simple thing. And of course, it ends up costing you quite a, quite a lot. It ends up costing you dearly when you get to the medium and the hard questions. Because if you were to sit there and compute every bloody thing that they give you, it will take you forever. You will end up doing a lot of unnecessary work. Similarly, here, I could do all of this thing, or I, say, I would say to myself, why should I waste my time doing all of this? 
I said to myself, comparing a tenth of something versus comparing a tenth of something else, the tenth plays no role. The tenth plays no role here. If you ask me to compare a tenth of this quantity versus the tenth of this quantity, why the bloody hell should I waste my time comparing a tenth of this thing versus the tenth of this thing when I can just as well compare the whole of this thing versus the whole of this thing? Because, because I'm taking the tenth of both is the same proportion, it's a waste of time trying to look at the tenth of something or fifteenth of something versus the fifteenth of something else. Might as well compare the whole of it. The tenth plays no role here. Similarly, here, similarly here, this two plays no role. Because when you divide this by two, you're looking at half of some quantity. Comparing half of some quantity versus half of some other quantity. Why compare half of this versus half of that when you can just as well compare the whole of this versus the whole of that? Two plays no role, so two is gone. So now I'm left with, so now I'm left with y versus x plus y. Now let me look at the camera. I want to see how much time I have before I go into too much more detail. All right, so now what do I do next? Now I have y versus x plus y. Again, if you ask me to compare, uh, let's say 3 plus uh, 3 quarter raised to versus 4 plus 3 quarter squared. Again, I could sit there and, and figure all of this out. What is 3 quarter squared and then add that to 3 and what is 3 quarter, 3 quarter squared and add that to 4. I could do all of that thing. But then again, if I were to do that, I will have missed the bloody point one more time. That is not the point here. These are not computations. These are comparison. What I have to sit there, what I have to do there is to sit there and realize, to be smart enough, to be, be, be clever enough, to be quick enough to realize that this 3 quarter squared, because it appears here and it appears here, it plays absolutely no role. It plays no role. So basically I'm comparing 3 versus 4. Of course 4 is bigger. The same thing I'm going to do here. This y plays no role. So what am I left with? Well, let's see. I'm going to cross out this bottom part here so that we don't, so we have room to work, so that we have the room to work with. So what am I left with here? Here we are left with, here we are left with x. Here I'm left with x. What do we have here? Nothing. We're left with nothing here. When I tell people that sometimes, not all the people obviously, and not all the time obviously, but sometimes some people, when, when they're told that they're left with nothing in a given column, they freeze like a deer caught in a headlight. I don't know why I use these expressions, because people are watching this like God knows where, and they might not understand this expression. I live in a country, I live in a rural area where we have a lot of deer, at, and at night time when you're driving, and if a deer comes in front of your car, when, he, when the deer sees the headlight, it freezes. It does not know what to do. It just stands in front of your car. It just freezes. Hence the expression, deer caught in a headlight. One does not know what should do, what one should do. Some people are in that situation. When you tell them that uh, you have nothing here, they just freeze. They don't know, what am I supposed to do with nothing? Well, how do you say nothing in mathematical language? When I have nothing, that's the same as saying it's a big fat zero. So basically, you want me to compare x, x, some quantity x, versus zero. Well, which one is bigger? Well, how the hell do I know? It depends on the value of x. If x is also 0, I don't know, maybe x also is 0. If that's the case, the answer would be c. If x happens to be something more than 0, if x is positive, the answer would have been b because I'm comparing something positive versus 0. If x happens to be something less than 0, if x is negative, the answer would have been a because something negative versus 0, of course, 0 is bigger than negative. It depends. It depends on the value of x. And since I do not know anything at all, I know absolutely nothing about the value of x, the answer would be d. I do not know what the answer is. The answer is d. That's it. That's all it is. So I'm going to do this problem one more time on here very quickly. y over 2 versus x plus y over 2. The very first thing I'm going to do is, is to realize that this 2 plays no role. Once the 2 is gone, I also realize that this y plays no role. So I'm, I'm left with 0 versus x. Since I know nothing about the x, the answer is d. That's all. I hope you found this helpful. I hope, uh, I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, or through computers, through the, through the webcam and uh, skip and all that, or if you wish to buy the solution manuals to this problem, 
For any reason at all pertaining to GRE, if, uh, if you wish to get hold of me, please go to my website at www.prepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepp